Bunch is here to talk about it. It's a break, Sonny, from the grim news of the last three weeks. I'm glad you can join me. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good, Hugh. I don't know that this is going to be much of a break from the grimness, uh, your killers of Flower Moon. Um, yeah. are you, are you, did you read uh, the David Grand book on which this is based? No, I did not. So the, the David Graham book is, is really good. I recommend it to everyone uh, who asks. It's, uh, it's, basic, it's pretty short. It's, it's basically about the formation of the FBI. There were a series of murders of Osage Indians in Oklahoma, and nobody could figure out what was going on, how it was happening, who was doing it. Uh, so the, the, the Osage went to Calvin Coolidge and uh, asked, hey, can we, can we have some help? We, gotta, we need to get some some people out here our our law enforcement isn't doing anything to stop this and they sent somebody out and over the over the course of some time they figured out that what was happening was um folks were marrying into osage families and then uh eliminating all of the osage members of the family so they could inherit the oil rights that the osage had the osage were on uh, oklahoma oil land they had they were the richest people per capita in the world uh, at that point in history, because they they had found so much oil so quickly, um, and it's a, wow. it's a really interesting story. It's a really interesting story, and uh, one of one of the problems with Killers of the Flower Moon, which I admire a lot, I think it's an interesting movie, and I think Martin Scorsese is doing a lot of admirable things in it. But one one issue with it is that it is three and a half hours long, and that story, that story from the book, the formation of the FBI and discovering how and why this was happening, is really the only last hour of uh, the movie, the rest of it, the first two and a half hours or so, is what happened before that. It was all the murders. It's, we, sit, we sit there in Osage County, Oklahoma, with Ernest Burkhardt, who's played by Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, who comes back from World War I uh, and is, falls in with his, uh, you know, uh, philanthropist slash gangster, I think you could describe him in the Scorsese mold, uh, Uncle King Hale, who's played by Robert De Niro, uh, Hale sets Burkhardt up with one of these Osage families. He marries uh, Molly Burkhardt, who's played by Lily Gladstone in the movie. Um, and uh, all around Molly, her family starts dying. Her, we, we see people, but, and this is, this is the structural problem of the film, is that we see all these people die, and we see how they die. There's no real mystery to it. We see the murders. We see the, uh, the, the suicides that aren't really suicides. You know, we see the wasting diseases that are caused by poisoning. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it lacks suspense in a very real way. And that, you know, look, movies, movies need suspense. Um, that said, uh, the, the, what Scorsese is going for here is uh, a very specific thing. And this is why the movie does earn its length, I think, from an artistic point of view. I, I will say artistically it's a success. I, I don't know how greatest success it will be with audiences uh, from this point of view but i do think artistically it works is it as long the aviator was pretty long uh games of new york my favorite scorsese movie pretty long uh does he normally go three and a half hours he's i mean he has gotten he has gotten long his movies have stretched over the years i think i mean uh you know casino one of my favorites is three hours long uh, the, the gangs of new york i think is three hours is 10 minutes something like that uh the aviator was about three hours yeah. Um, the Irishman, of course, was uh, about this length, about three and a half hours. Uh, so, you know, it, look, he, he, he does like to go, to go long on these kind of late stage movies. Silence. I don't know if you saw Silence. Oh, I love the, Silence. Uh, but three. then again, I'm yeah. Catholic and it's Jap- I, I know a little bit about yeah. Japan and have been there. So I, 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 there's very few I don't like. You know, I'm not a big Goodfellas uh, fan, but it, it's a, there, but this one I'm intrigued by because it does, strike me as a little bit of gangs of new york in terms of the sinister nature of the preview and that's all i've seen yeah yeah, yeah. no i i think that's a, that's a good comp the, the big problem with this movie is that it doesn't have a daniel day lewis style figure or a um uh it, it's not it's not like i see i prefer goodfellas and casino uh to silence and the irishman um because i i kind of like that frenetic style of filmmaking this is much more staid much more subdued um, and what, what Scorsese is trying to do here is, you know, the, the, the reason the movie is so long and the reason it kind of has to be to succeed at what he's trying to get at is he's, he's, he's examining the ways in which, you know, a community becomes acclimated to a, a kind of obvious wickedness, right? When they're, when they're surrounded by it, when they are benefiting from it, 
um, when when that evil kind of originates from people they admire uh, and hold to be, you know, better than them, right? That's why, uh, you know, it's, it's important that King Hale is often shown doing philanthropic works. You know, he's, he's giving, uh, he's building, you know, buildings and he's building schools and he's building hospitals, um, but he's also, you know, murdering people for the insurance money. I mean, there's one, again, when I, what, what, one of the things that really jumps out at this movie is how, how dumb and blatant so many of these plots were that they got away with. For instance, uh, King Hale takes out a $25,000 insurance policy on a, uh, on a depressed uh, Native American fellow. And, uh, you know, about 30 minutes later in the movie ends up uh, having, paying somebody to shoot him uh, as a, you know, to, to make it look like a suicide. Um, and uh, it, it, it's so obvious what is happening here. It's so, it's so clear and, and, you know, ridiculous that he was able to get away with it for so long. But that's why. Go back to the book. Was it, was it clear and ridiculous in the book? I mean, movies have to be movies for a reason, but I'm curious about the, the actual story beneath the movie. Did it, did, did it take, like, FBI skills? There was no, no metric, right, because it's the first time it exists, but was it hard to solve? I think it was. I think it was harder. Yes, it was hard for the FBI to solve because the FBI, you know, didn't really know what was going on. All they knew that there was that there were a bunch of dead people. They weren't all obviously murders. You know, again, some were various wasting diseases. Uh, some were some were claiming to be suicides. Uh, you know, the the Native American population in America was uh, not not well respected uh, at that point in history, and a lot of a lot of people dismissed them as you know, alcoholics and, and depressives. And uh, it was like, well, you know, of course they die young. That's, that's just what happens with those people. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting, I, again, I, the book is really, really good. Uh, and I, I feel like folks, folks should see the movie, but they should also read the book to, to, to kind of get a, uh, a better sense of what, uh, what, what prompted it. Tell me a little bit about De Niro in this movie, because I've been watching his career sag as he gets older, and it's inevitable, right, as you get older, unless you get scripts that are exactly tailored for a man your age, they will always sort of just fade away. Does, yeah, is, well, he, I mean, is this a strong performance? I think, yeah, he's very, he's very, very good in this. Uh, it, it, it's funny, you know, he has taken about 30 paycheck jobs over the last, you know, three years. Exactly. Um, but he, he's, he's worked with Martin Scorsese twice over that same stretch of time, and they're both you know, top tier performances. They they both easily. If he is not nominated for a, a best supporting actor for this for this role, I would be very surprised. I'll is DiCaprio way. at the top of his game? You know, DiCaprio. <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Uh, DiCaprio is okay in this. I, I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't wowed by him. I prefer his work in uh, Wolf of Wall Street or Shutter Island or The Departed. If we're if we're talking. Uh, uh, Scorsese movies he's been in. Um, I liked Aviator. I thought Aviator was he's, fine. He's, yeah, he's he's great in he's great in the Aviator. Um, in this movie, it's it's interesting. He doesn't often play this sort of role, but he's playing a guy I can only describe as as a complete goober. I mean, he's just a he's just a complete uh, idiot. It, there, there's a Coen Brothers sensibility to a lot of this film. Oh. Um, in that in that the the criminal enterprises are so dumb and the people committing them are so stupid that there's almost a very black comedy to the things that they are getting away with and trying to get away with. Um, and he is, he is kind of exhibit number one in this, you know, he's got, he, he doesn't, he doesn't speak very well. He's got kind of bad teeth. He's, you know, he's charming ish in his own way, but not, uh, not in the, the handsome pretty boy way that you often expect from uh, DiCaprio. But the and then Matt Caprio Damon is, shows up, right? Is Matt Damon, you know, J. Edgar Hoover? Hoover? Uh, Meth Damon. That's Jesse Plemons. Uh, oh, that's uh, it's it's the guy who looks like Matt Damon who was on uh, Breaking Bad. Well, you see, I like didn't Matt even Damon, know that. So. See, yeah, I know. Yeah, no. There was a, there was a running joke for a while. People were calling him Meth Damon because he looks so much like <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> I didn't and know he that. Was, he was one of the bad guys on uh, um, Breaking Bad. So uh, no, Jesse Plemons shows up. He's he's playing the the FBI, the first FBI agent, you know, who shows up and with the hat figure out. at the door. So, yeah, he's so good. He's he's very good in this movie. Um, and and the, the supporting cast is great. Uh, you know, Brendan Fraser has a couple scenes. He's very Brendan good in it. Fraser's in this. He, he's very briefly in it uh, as a as a lawyer, uh, and he's he's very good. Uh, John Lithgow was also in the courtroom scenes as a lawyer. 
And the, the supporting cast of the, the villains is really great, too. It's a bunch of names you wouldn't know. I won't even uh, recite them here. But the, the, the so way, It's a Wes the Anderson way. version of Martin Scorsese. Everybody shows up. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because there were some people who described uh, the coda at the end of the film. Um, which, uh, so, you know, you know, at the end of the of films like this, a lot of the times they, they have photos of the real people yes. and, and title cards saying like, this is what happened, you know, and yes. this is, this is, so instead of doing that, Martin Scorsese stages essentially a, uh, a live radio play, you know, the live radio play, oh, yes. you, you, oh, yes. you, you know, have guys talking and narrating and people would come in and talk parts and there would be guys in the background, you know, banging on cans. And, and rubbing, you know, uh, rubbing Fo paper together. Fo Foley to, artists, to, is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so instead of having the title cards, he does that. And at the very end of the film, and it is, it is very Wes Anderson in that there's a lot of, like, very precisely framed shots of people showing up and speaking in clipped accents and very mannered sort of way. And then at the very, very end of the film, uh, Martin Scorsese comes up. Uh, it, Martin Scorsese, he's playing, a, you know, he's playing a narrator on this on this radio show, but he essentially looks into the camera and says, I do not approve of the things that we have seen in this movie. He doesn't actually say this, but he says it in so many words. And I really can't help but feel that this is his reaction to having spent so many years having to tell people over and over again, I don't approve of the gangsters in Goodfellas or Mean Streets or, uh, you know, Casino or The Departed. Like, I, depiction does not equal endorsement. The problem with depiction is that you can only show things and in movies. And it's very, it's very funny in, a, in its own way. You have to, it, it, again, this is not precisely so he's not denouncing he the Marvel Universe at the end like he always does? <laughs> he comes out and he says, uh, you know, Captain America could not have solved this crime. Because Captain ah! America is a book for children. Ah! Uh, so, you know, that's, it, it, was really, it was a really shocking moment. I, I couldn't quite believe it. Um, but I, I really... Well, Sonny, I, I'm... Uh, I'm you kidding. sold me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, I would go anyway. Sonny Bunch on X, the site formerly known as Twitter. And go to uh, Across the Movie Aisle as his podcast, as well as the Bulwark goes to the movies. Thank you, Sonny Bunch.